I'm just looking for Venus. Yes, you can see Venus during the day. It's not easy. It helps if you know where to look, but actually looking at Venus during the daytime is your best chance to see any kind of features on Venus. And in this episode, I'm gonna tell you all about observing Venus. Hello, I'm Sula, host of Sula's Big Adventures, and this episode is all about observing Venus. I'm making this video at the request of one of the viewers, Eric. Venus is the second planet from the sun after Mercury. It averages 67 million miles from the sun, while the Earth averages 93 million miles from the sun. It takes Venus 224 days to orbit the Earth. Every 584 days, the orbits of the Earth and Venus make the two planets close together, about 25 million miles apart. Since Venus can get so close to the Earth, it appears larger than the other planets and brighter. It also appears so bright around magnitude negative four because the surface is made up of carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and sulfur dioxide, among other things that make the atmosphere of Venus highly reflective. In fact, 65% of the sunlight that hits Venus is reflected back into space. Venus is the third brightest object in the sky after the sun and the moon. So it's an easy and dazzling naked eye object, but a true disappointment in the telescope. Sorry, Eric. However, there are things to look for in a telescope, most notably the phases of Venus that are similar to the moon's phases. The layer of clouds on Venus are uniform, making it appear mostly as a featureless ball. But you can occasionally make out dusky patches. But make no mistake, these are difficult to see and you won't see them probably at all when viewing Venus at night because it's so bright, it makes seeing any cloud features difficult. Your best opportunity for seeing any cloud features at all would be to view Venus in late afternoon when it's an evening star and early morning when it's a morning star. The first person to note Venus's cloud features was a Roman clergyman, Francesco Bianchini. In 1726, he studied Venus when it was an evening star by setting up telescopes all around Rome that had apertures of only about two and a half inches and magnification of about 112 times, starting about a half an hour after sunset and continuing for as long as he could, Bianchini discovered a series of dusky spots on Venus comparable to the appearance of the seas on the moon as seen with the naked eye, though less distinct. Later, astronomers saw similar spots near the Terminator. So with careful observation, you might be able to see dusky patches near the Terminator, but don't be surprised if they're less than overwhelming. <laughs> As Venus orbits around the sun, just before and just after it gets between the Earth and the sun, it reaches greatest elongation. Greatest western elongation is when it's a morning star, and greatest eastern elongation is when it's an evening star. When Venus is in between the Earth and the Sun, it's at inferior conjunction. And when it gets behind the Sun, that's superior conjunction. At those times, you can't see Venus. 36 days before and 36 days after greatest elongation, Venus is at its greatest illumination. And at those times, it can reach magnitude four negative 4.8, but it only appears as a crescent. On the date of greatest elongation, Venus will appear half illuminated like our quarter moon. Within days of inferior conjunction is when Venus will appear at its thin crescent phase. But be careful if you try to observe it at this time in your telescope as you'll need to point it near the sun. But you'll have a good chance to see the thin crescent phase of Venus in August of 2023 when Venus will be eight degrees from the sun. The lit crescent might appear in favorable conditions as a complete ring. 2023 will be exceptional for viewing Venus telescopically and with the naked eye. There's going to be a beautiful conjunction of Venus and Jupiter a half a degree apart on March 1st, 2023. Also, from that date until May, Venus will remain in the sky for a long time after sunset, up to three and a half hours after sunset from some locations. On June 4th, 2023, Venus will reach greatest eastern elongation when it appears in the western sky, 45 degrees from the sun at magnitude negative 4.3. On June 21st, 
the summer solstice, Venus will be accompanied by a lovely crescent moon. And from that date into July 2023, Venus will show all its phases and disc sizes. You can record your observations over several days and note the changes in its phases and size. This will be much more rewarding than trying to make out barely visible variations in the cloud colors, which personally I have never observed. It always just appears as a white disc to me. But seeing the phases, particularly the crescent phase, is quite attractive and worth looking for when it comes to observing Venus. In June 2023, Venus will reach dichotomy. Dichotomy is when it's at its half moon shape and for the rest of the spring into early summer 2023 it will display an increasingly large crescent as it gets closer to earth. When using a telescope to look at Venus during this time you'll note that the apparent size of Venus's disk will grow doubling from its present size by May 27th and when it's doubled again in size on July 16th 2023 its large crescent shape should be easily discernible even with seven time binoculars. And if you're watching this in a year other than 2020 you can check for the date of greatest elongation, dichotomy, and to see Venus's phases and changes in apparent size on websites like space.com. Venus is at its greatest brilliance between greatest elongation and conjunction, and after conjunction, Venus will reemerge in the morning sky and repeat the sequence of events all over again that I will miss because I'm not getting up in the morning to look at Venus. <laughs> Venus in a telescope you can try to look for variations in the brightness of the clouds, especially when viewing it in the daytime and looking at the terminator, the boundary between day and night, like on the moon. Um, also, look on the datas of greatest elongation, the date for the phase called dichotomy, like our quarter moon phase. And also in August 2023, you can try to see the lit crescent of Venus extending around the disk as a ring and observing unaided look for the great conjunction that i mentioned on march 1st and with binoculars you should be able to see the crescent phase of venus in july of 2023 but put the binoculars on a tripod or station stabilize them or just enjoy the bright planet as it lingers in the sky up to midnight in some places this year this doesn't occur often so take advantage of uh, Venus as a beautiful uh, evening star lingering in the sky for so long in the spring and admire its dazzling white appearance in the daytime sky if you can. You probably aren't going to see much more than the featureless white appearance in your telescope and unlike the other planets you don't need a large aperture telescope. You can see um, better maybe with a moon filter to give contrast um, but those are about the only things that I can tell you to look for on Venus. It's a hard planet. Uh, it's, it's beautiful naked eye, but difficult telescopically. Venus in a telescope, um, just try to look for phases and try for, for features if you want to, um, but don't, <laughs> don't have high expectations. Um, so that's all I know to tell you about observing Venus. Um, I'm going to look for it now before it gets dark and see if I can make out anything. So that's it for now. I hope that helped. I'll see you soon. Until then, go outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula signing off. I'm going to get warm. I'm freezing.